You should see your faces. That's the exact expression I had on my face at 11, 17 p.m., June 12th, last year, my second night in Medellin, Colombia. I was trying to order a sandwich. I didn't speak a lick of Spanish. The girls behind the counter giggled to each other. <laughs> Look at this hopeless gringo. They told me the price, and I'm just handing them my card. I'm like, I don't know what you said. Don't rip me off. That night, I spoke almost no Spanish. And a month later, I was conversational. What happened? Every single one of my failed projects ignored one of these principles. And every single one of my successful projects followed them. So the first thing I do when I'm tackling a new project as I do a lot of research, articles, books, research papers. But I don't look in the usual places because conventional wisdom is often wrong. Instead, I look at the people who have done what I want to do fast. Because in order to do something fast, you have to take all of what is out there about how to do something and distill it into the core principles, leaving the extraneous tactics behind. After I've done all my research, I distill that into a plan. And that is a process, something, what am I going to do every single day? Wake up, what does that day look like? And every day is the same. And then I execute the plan. I don't change it. I don't touch anything. And that's exactly how I learned Spanish so quickly. Back in Medellin, I had done my research, part of which included interviewing three language learning experts. And I had distilled all of that into a plan. So it's 9.55 on a typical morning. What does that look like? Well, I roll out of bed, pull on my pants, mosey on over to the kitchen, start some coffee, and at 10, my tutor arrives. I have three hours of tutoring one-on-one -on -one with my tutor, Adrian, because my research found that that is by far the most important thing when learning a language, speaking with a native teacher. Sometimes we stay home and we cover a new grammar concept, like how to conjugate an important verb or how to compare things. But sometimes we sit out on the porch and drink local craft beer and shoot the breeze. Or we'll go to the farmer's market where I'll get real-world experience. Not to mention some really good Colombian food. Torreza choclo con quesito, anyone? And it doesn't just work with language learning. When I was a rower, my team threw a party for me when I broke 100 pounds. It was my sophomore year of high school. In seventh grade, I played American football. The weight range for the league was 75 to 120 pounds. I weighed 65, so I chugged liters of water, wore wet jeans, and stuffed my jock with sandbags and water balloons to make weight. I could get messy. But in November of 2014, I decided that enough was enough, that I was done being so small. So I followed the process, and I gained 26 pounds of muscle in a month. That's 12 kilo. I want you to forget everything that I just told you, because none of it matters without something else. You want matters? You want to know the secret to learning anything in 30 days? Actually caring. None of this other stuff matters unless you genuinely want to do what you set out to do. Unless it's non-negotiable. Do you know how many times I tried to learn a language before I was successful? French, German, Chinese, Indonesian. I thought I wanted to learn them. But did I really want to learn them? No. Do you know how many times I tried to put on weight before I was successful? Every single time, I thought I wanted to do it, I felt like I committed, but I didn't really commit. I have failed over and over and over again, and every single time was not because I had the wrong tactics or I didn't have the correct strategy, because I did. It was because I didn't 
fully commit. It wasn't non-negotiable. And that's the thing about non-negotiables. We're very easy to fool in thinking that we really want to do something. But do you? But do we? You know what's non-negotiable? Work. You get up every day and you go to work. It's not even in the cards to not do it. That's when something is non-negotiable, where you literally don't even give yourself the choice. Who here is trying to get up early before? Say I. And who here has failed miserably every single time? Say I. <laughs> I'm a night owl. I've seen more sunrises than I'd like to admit. When I was living in Vietnam last year, I left my apartment for the first time after dark on more than one occasion. But last September, I had a lapse in productivity. I was getting up at 9 or 10, but I wasn't really getting rolling until 11. So I decided to get up early. But unlike every single other time, I made it non-negotiable. Every single morning, the alarm would go off at 5.30, and I would get up and get at it. And that was that. I then went on to get up successfully for the first time in my life. Did it for several months, still get up earlier. But the kicker, it wasn't even that hard. The very fact of making it non-negotiable made it easy. The very fact of not giving myself the choice to not get up eliminated all of the, oh, this bed is warm, eh, five more minutes, five more minutes. Oh, that was two hours. None of that. When I was gaining weight, I had to eat at least 5,000 calories every day. This is what my dinner looked like. Two hours after that dinner, every night, 10 p.m., I sat in the kitchen with a 1,200 thick shake in my hand. Towards the end of the month, the taste made me gag. Just entering the kitchen and pulling out the blender made my stomach go in circles, as if it knew it was coming. I didn't want to drink it. To this day, I still can't drink peanut butter. But every single night, I did. It wasn't negotiable. I just did it. It wasn't even in the cards. When I was learning Spanish, one night it was 3 a.m., and I still hadn't done my pronunciation training. And you know what? I went to bed at 5 a.m. that night. And I didn't get up the next morning until 10, and was right back at my classes. It wasn't negotiable. In today's world, we're all doing a million different things at once. We all feel the need to be busy, to be doing everything. All these tiny little things that we think we have to do. But what would happen if you dropped all but a couple of those balls you're juggling? Focus on a few things. Family, health, work, and one skill. Not only would you make significant progress towards that one thing, but you'd be happier. If you truly commit to one thing, do your research, distill it into a plan, and then execute, you'll be unstoppable. If you truly commit to one thing, you'll be shocked at how much you can actually do in 30 days. This is a list of all the things that I still want to learn. And I will cross them off one at a time. But what's on your list? Or more importantly, what are you going to stop doing so you can truly commit to one thing? Thank you.